I think I, I sort of like history because to me it almost seems like, you know, it's like a detective story or a novel, you know, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that where you, you read, you know, so many excellent history books or historical novels, but there's always something else to find out. Yeah, there are things that people have overlooked, uh, not out of any malice, but because they're interested in a particular thing, so they haven't looked at something else. Um, so to just give you an example, um, I've been working for the past couple of years on this Australian woman from South, South Australia who was the principal of the first girls' school in Delhi for 30 years. And nobody really knows about her in Australia. Um, yet I would have thought that this would be something that was important, you know, for the history of women in Australia, for the history of education, for uh, the relationships between India and Australia and so on, yet nobody knows about this woman. And yet I think the reason for her success in India was actually particularly because she was Australian and not British. Because the British, because of their, color, of their imperial position, could never have done the kinds of things that she did. But because she was Australian and seen as more peripheral, as a dominion of Britain, she was seen as more similar to the position of Indians and therefore was able to do a large number of things. She worked with Gandhi, she worked with a number of other freedom fighters, she set up uh, a home rule sort of uh, organization in her school. She was able to do a number of things. And this, this is something that, you know, was an accidental sort of find, but it's become a really, for me, an incredibly interesting project. And, and the same thing has been with looking at, um, you know, Indians in Australia, because um, it, when I first came to Australia, I found that there was, you know, obviously the white settlement of Australia, and then there was indigenous history, which was really, coming to the fore in, in a really crucial way. But of course, there's also an in-between thing of, of migrancy in Australia, which didn't really start after the Second World War or indeed after, you know, 1880s. I mean, it's actually been there since the First Fleet, that there have been, you know, various uh, people of different nationalities and colors coming to Australia, including a lot of Indians, because um, uh, the uh, India and, and Australia were both British colonies, and. Australia was supplied by British ships, uh, sorry, by uh, Indian ships for almost 60 years after the first fleet came because it made sense. It's much closer to get your goods from India than to get them from Britain, I mean, in terms of distance. So that idea of that, that Australia's never really ever had an only white history, I think is, is a really important one. That the, the indigenous history, which has always been elided until recently, and which is now actually taking its absolutely crucial and foremost place in you know, the Australian historiography. But there is also a multicultural history, which has been seen to be much more modern, but it's actually also something that has always been there, but which has never really been recorded or understood. So I just find those sorts of things interesting. It's like looking like a it's like a detective novel, you're always finding unexpected clues to certain interesting things and then you go and try and, you know, make a story out of them, you know. So it's, yeah, so you end up with a, a detective novel at the end of it. Uh, for a long time, we've, people have thought of Australia as a, as a European, um, you know, society which by some stroke of bad luck has been stuck in this far end of the world where we should have been hanging off, you know, Ireland or something, you know, so that we could be European. Whereas we have this enormous luck in the sense that we have um, indigenous, multicultural and uh, European history in an Asian region which so we have the ability to become the hub for all kinds of cultural histories and understandings and connections and languages. And we should treat that as a strength. And we can only treat it as a strength by always seeing ourselves as part of this region, rather than trying to hang on to some kind of European baggage. So.